Hello everybody. As you know, I'm Father Greg Chisholm here at St. Pat's and I'd like to speak in the name of Father Dominic, our pastor and Deacon Juan. Uh, we thank you for allowing us into your homes, which are domestic churches. And today I'd just like to have a small reflection. I'd like to dedicate it to the people of Nova Scotia, my native province, especially those that who were killed and their, those who mourn them. May God grant them eternal rest and grant us happiness uh, in spite of all that is going on. And I'd like to talk to you today about something which is particularly dear to my heart. Uh, I feel very passionate about this theme. It's about our Blessed Mother. Uh, as we start the month of our Blessed Mother, the month of May, it's interesting to think about her and what's her role in our life. What's her role in the life of the church? And what's her role in the life of God's people in, in these very difficult times? So I'd like to start with her prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> May Mary be a blessing to you and to all your family. I have this little statue here, it's Father Dominic's, it's called Our Lady of the Knots, Undoer of the Knots. Uh, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, is particularly fond of this devotion to Our Lady who undoes the knots, who undoes and untangles all those difficult problems we have in our life. There's so many titles to Mary, uh, Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, uh, Guadalupe, uh, Immaculate Conception, uh, we have so many. Did you know that there were over 220 feasts celebrated in the church <clears throat> each year around Mary? Not all these feasts are celebrated in every country, but she is so important in our lives. And sometimes we don't pay what I feel sincerely is the necessary attention to her in our lives. I'm just going to mention a few in, in May, because this is what we're doing now. We'd like to come into your house, into your domestic church in May with Mary. Here's a few feasts just for May. On the 1st of May, Our Lady Queen, Lady Queen of May. On the 5th of May, Our Lady of the Apostles. On the 9th of May, Our Lady of Loreto. On the 11th, an important feast, especially in Brazil, Aparecida, a huge devotion to our Blessed Mother in that country and in the world. The 13th of May, which I'll talk a little bit more about later, Our Lady of Fatima, when she appeared to those three little kids on, uh, in, in Portugal. 17th of May, Our Lady of the Tears. Isn't that a beautiful expression? 24th of May, Our Lady Help of Christians. We call it in Peru, Auxiliadora, Our Lady Help of Christians. And the 31st of May, Queenship of Mary, Mediator of All Graces. Now, I'd like to share with you, I know it's a, not the easiest thing perhaps, I'd like to share something with you in Spanish. It's a little song that we sing, especially in Our Lady of Fatima and Our Lady of Lourdes. And it, it goes this way. I'm just going to sing it once and then I'll sing it again. And at the very end, we'll sing it. But it's a very simple song. It says, Maria, tu eres mi madre. Mary, you are my mother. Mary, tu eres mi amor. You are my love. Mary, my mother, I give you my heart. Mary, you are my mother, you are my love. Mary, you are my mother, I give you my heart. Maria, tu eres mi madre. Maria, tu eres mi amor. Maria, madre mía, yo te doy mi corazón. Maria, madre mía, yo te doy mi corazón. I'm going to repeat it. I think the, uh, the words are on the screen, so you can follow it with me. Maria, tu eres mi madre. Maria, tu eres mi amor. Maria, madre mía, yo te doy mi corazón. I give you my heart. Maria, madre mía, yo te doy mi corazón. So we've seen, we've seen some feasts of, Maria, of Mary. Um, why is it that some people don't know her? Or why is it 
that in the Protestant tradition, the evangelical, the Baptist, the uh, Pentecostal tradition, the United Church, they don't go for Mary. It was very difficult in the times of Ref Ref uh, Reformation. The Protestants thought that Mary interfered with Christ. They thought there was a competition between Mary and Jesus, which is never the situation. The popes have always said very clearly, only if Mary leads us to Jesus is it a legitimate devotion to her. We say, to Jesus, through Mary. And that's what we want this May. We're encouraging you to look at Mary as a way to go to Jesus. She was the one who said, for instance, at the bonus of Cana, when the wine ran out and Jesus changed the water into wine, she says to the servants, do as he says, do as Jesus says. So the Lutheran tradition in particular rejected Mary because they didn't accept the Old Testament as an integral part of the New Testament. In the Old Testament, there is a plethora of examples of prefigurations of this wonderful, magnificent woman called Mary of Nazareth. Right from the start in Genesis, God says the woman will crush the head of the serpent. And that is the Immaculate Conception. The woman will crush the head of the serpent. Mary is the one who will crush the head of the devil. Mary is the one who will protect us in our lives. And at the very end of the scriptures in Revelation, we have Mary victorious over the devil in the book of Revelation. This is really important. We can think about Mary as the new Ark of the Covenant. Mary, the new Eve. Mary doesn't start just in the New Testament, but she has been prefigured in the Old Testament. And that's what we must take into account of this marvelous woman, especially those who criticize or don't understand or don't want to understand the importance of Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, in our lives. It's interesting to point out, what are the dogmas of Mary? There are certain teachings of the Church which are absolutely true, which we must understand before we have a full and mature understanding of Mary herself. First of all, her perpetual virginity. Mary was a virgin before, during the birth, and after the birth of Jesus. She was consecrated as bride, as the virginal one, and they also, she is the Immaculate Conception. She was conceived in an Immaculate way. She was released, and she was relieved, and she was exonerated from the effects of original sin. The perpetual virginity of Mary, her Immaculate Conception. She is the Mother of God. She's not just the Mother of Jesus, the man. She is the Mother of Jesus, who was God. And finally, the dogma of the Assumption. She was assumed into heaven, and that woman who gave life to the God of life was preserved from the corruption of the mortal flesh, and she was assumed body and soul into heaven. So, the perpetual virginity of Mary, her immaculate conception, she is the mother of God, and she was soon assumed into heaven. These are the dogmas of faith that we have around Mary. Now, I would like to suggest something to you as a family, if you would think about it during this month of May, especially on Friday. I think it's just Friday, the 1st of May. On Friday, the 1st of May, the Cardinal Archbishop of Toronto, Thomas Collins, with all the bishops and all the dioceses in Canada and in the United States, will be consecrating the Canadian people to our Blessed Mother asking her intercession during this time of the coronavirus, during these very difficult times, from Toronto to Los Angeles, from Vancouver to Miami, from the Northwest Territories to the Southern parts of the States, all countries in the world, but we in particular in North America, will be celebrating the consecration of our lives, of our people, to Mary. So I would invite you to enter into this web page of the Saint Michael's Cathedral slash live. www 
St. Michael's Cathedral slash live after the morning mass on Friday, the 1st of May. The morning mass is at 7.30 and then around eight o'clock as we end the mass, the Cardinal will invite each and every one of us to consecrate ourselves and consecrate our families to Mary. You are also invited to do that. The other thing I wonder if you'd like to consider, make an altar, a, a table. If you have an, an image of the Virgin or perhaps a picture or a painting, or maybe one of the kids could draw some paintings of our Blessed Mother with perhaps a candle. During the month of May, you might want to consider having a special spot in the house dedicated to our Blessed Mother. And if you could say the rosary together, that would be particular, inter particularly interesting. Pray to Mary. The Feast of the uh, Our Lady of Fatima is in the middle of the month, the 13th of, of May. And she appeared to these three beautiful children in times of war, a terribly difficult time between the First and the Second World War. And she told people clearly, we must repent of our sins. We must ask forgiveness. We must do sacrifices. We must pray, especially the Rosary, for peace in the world. So I would like you to remember on the 13th of, of uh, May, which is the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima, we will be praying the Rosary for you as well that day. Finally, can I ask you to consider, especially at noon hour, it doesn't have to be every day, but if it were every day, it'd be perfect, a huge long-term tradition of, of uh, centuries within the church to pray the Angelus. The Angelus is a very simple prayer. You can find it on the webpage of St. Patrick's Parish. Just go to St. Patrick's Parish and it's there. And that will teach us how to consecrate each and every day to Mary and to pray for peace and especially to pray that this coronavirus may cease once and for all and we can get back to some type of normality in our lives. Finally, I would remind you, this month is so special. We as a parish team will be praying for you. We will be praying and consecrating ourselves with you to our Blessed Mother. So I'd like to end uh, reminding you of those the three little things that you might be able to do in May. Pray the Rosary. Pray the Angelus, and have just a little place in your house dedicated to our Blessed Mother. So I would end praying once again the song that says, Mary, you are my mother. Mary, you are my love. Mary, my mother, I give you my heart now and forever. Maria, tu eres mi madre. Maria, tu eres mi amor. Maria, madre mía, yo te doy mi corazón. Maria, Madre Mia, yo te doy mi corazón. Have a wonderful day and have a beautiful month of our Blessed Virgin Mary.